Hi students, hope you have got an idea about the basics of fermentation in traditional foods from our previous lecture. In this lecture, we will discuss about fermentation in industrial level. As we all know that fermentation was originated from ancient times. Home fermentations were practiced in the form of pickling, brewing, baking and cheese making. Later on, the production of large scale fermented foods rely on commercially available microbial cultures. The usage of defined cultures became the industrial standard in breweries by the 19th century. The well-defined cultures along with the technique of sterilization or pasteurization allowed the fermentation process to reach an industrial scale. So the objective of our lecture is once after going through this session, you will be able to explain the industrial fermentation process used in food processing industries and also to identify the steps involved in production of wine and soy sauce. Let me step into the industrial fermentation. Large scale fermentation in industries perform the deliberate use of microorganisms such as bacteria, yeast and mold to produce fermented products. Industrial microbiology has made worthy contributions to the food industries for the economical production and thorough utilization of all byproducts. The production of vinegar, citric acid, ethanol, enzymes such as lipase, rennet, invertase are some examples of products of fermentation. The biomass production like starter cultures of baker's yeast and lactic acid bacteria are also manufactured in industries. Let us now look into the industrial fermentation process. The industrial fermentation process are classified into three types. They are based on type of substrate, based on feeding of substrate and also based on the need of aeration. Now we will discuss each category individually. First we will see about the fermentation based on the type of substrate. So based on type of substrate they are classified into two types. First one is solid state fermentation. It is also referred as surface fermentation. It is the process in which the microbial growth and product formation occurs on the surface of a solid substrate. The microorganisms grow on the moist substrate with little or no free water. This method is suitable for microorganisms that need lesser water for its growth. This method is also economically viable as the fermentation is carried out using agricultural byproducts. Several agro crops such as rice, wheat, maize, barley, and industrial residues such as bran, straw, sugarcane bagasi, oil cakes, corn cobs, sawdust, fruit pulp, etc. can be used as substrate. This method also uses an inert material as substrate which require additional nutritional supplement as well as carbon sources. These raw materials serves as source of carbon and energy. Few examples of solid state fermentations are mushroom cultivation, bread making, production of miso, temp and soy sauce and also cocoa processing. This method is considered to be a cost effective due to use of agro-industrial residues as media for the growth and production. Very little amount of water is utilized for the process which accordingly releases negligible or considerably less quantity of effluent thus reducing the pollution concern. This process use low volume equipment of lower cost but effective in producing concentrated products. There is an increased oxygen diffusion rate into the substrate. Hence, aeration is much easier in solid state fermentation. 
This fermentation can be effectively utilized at very smaller scale which makes them suitable for rural areas. The next type of fermentation based on type of substrate is the submerged fermentation. This process occurs in the presence of liquid nutrient media seeded with microorganisms which trigger the fermentation process. This method is suitable for microorganisms that require very high moisture. The commonly used liquid medias are molasses, broth, corn steep liquor, etc. The substrates are utilized rapidly by the microorganisms and need to be constantly supplemented with nutrients. Also, a steady flow of oxygen must be circulated throughout the process as the microbes break down the nutrients in the media they produce enzymes. The significance of submerged fermentation is that purification of product is easier and primarily used in the extraction of secondary metabolites that needs to be used in liquid form. This process is industrially used for the production of enzymes, citric acid, etc. Let us see the second type of fermentation process which is based on type of substrate. So they are classified into three types, batch fermentation, continuous fermentation and fed batch fermentation. Regarding batch fermentation, it is a closed process system in which the fermented tank is filled with material such as substrate and inoculum. The processed parameters such as temperature and pH are set and occasionally nutritive supplements are added to the substrate. Until the process comes to an end, neither substrate is added nor the product is removed from the fermenter. Fermentation proceeds and after a desired period, the products are taken out from the fermenter. Once the process is over, the fermenter is cleaned and the process is repeated. Next is the continuous fermentation. The sterilized liquid nutrients are added continuously into the fermenter at a fixed rate as the end products are continuously removed. In this type of process, the growth of bacterial population can be maintained in a steady state over a long period of time. Regarding fed batch fermentation, it is a process which employs both modes of operation such as the batch and also the continuous process where the substrate is added at a fixed time interval during the fermentation process. The last type of fermentation is according to the need of aeration. So they are classified into the most two common types of fermentation such as the aerobic fermentation and the anaerobic fermentation. Regarding aerobic fermentation, most of the large scale fermentation processes are carried out in presence of aerobic conditions. In aerobic fermentation, the materials in fermenter are agitated with the help of impeller or sterile air is forced into the fermenter. In this process, it is necessary to maintain the dissolved oxygen concentration above a specified minimal level. Next is anaerobic fermentation. This process involves without the presence of oxygen. The provision for aeration and mixing device is not needed in anaerobic fermentation. But in few cases, aeration and mixing may be needed in an initial period. Once the fermentation begins, the gas produced in the process generates sufficient mixing. The air present in the headspace should be replaced by carbon dioxide or nitrogen or some suitable combinations. During this type of fermentation, the released carbon dioxide and hydrogen are collected and reused. Fermenter is the equipment used for fermentation in industrial scale. Hence, you must know about the industrial fermenter. A fermenter or a bioreactor is a vessel 
in which the living cells or biochemically active substances act on a substrate to produce a product of higher quality. An industrial fermenter can hold up to 200,000 liters of cultures. They are usually made of stainless steel to withstand the acid produced during fermentation. The components in most of the fermenters are impellers for mixing of living cells and nutrients, sparger for giving aeration, jacket or coils for cooling or heating, probes to monitor the pH, temperature, pressure and oxygen content and valves and steam traps. Commercially important fermentation process can be divided into four groups. The range of fermentation process are grouped into three categories. They are production of biomass or microbial cells, production of extracellular and intracellular components, transformation of substrate. First, we will discuss about the biomass production. Sometimes the microbial cell itself are the products of fermentation. The major biomass or microbial cell production is the production of yeast, lactobacillus to be used in baking or in dairy industry respectively and production of algae which is used for as a human or animal food. Next is the production of extracellular components. These extracellular components are grouped as primary and secondary metabolites. These microbial components produced during the growth phase are called primary metabolites. These primary metabolites are economically important and are being produced by fermentation. An example for these primary components are ethanol, lactic acid, citric acid, nucleotides, vitamins and few amino acids. Whereas secondary components are components produced in the stationary phase of the microbial growth. They are derived from the intermediate and product of primary metabolism. Secondary metabolites are used as medicines, flavorings and drugs. For example, antibiotics, antiseptic, fungicides are produced as secondary metabolite. Whereas, during the production of intercellular components, the cells are ruptured at the end of fermentation and the environment is engineered to produce a give a maximum production. The intercellular components such as microbial enzymes like lipase, cellulase, lactase, recombinant proteins and microbial oils are produced through this fermentation process. Next is transformation of substrate. It is a process of conversion of raw material into a valuable finished product through fermentation. Production of vinegar, steroid, antibiotics, etc. are examples of microbial transformation process. As this lecture is dealing with fermentation in large scale, we will focus into the processing of two commercially important fermented products. First, we will discuss about the production of wine. The conversion of grape juice into wine was practiced dating back to the dawn of civilization. Wine can also be made from other fruits. Red wine and white wine are the two major types of wine based on the color. All grape skins contain tannins whereas skin of red grape contain more of tannins. The presence of tannins imparts the color texture to the red wine. The red color of wine is that the fermentation process occurs together with the grape skins. The prominent microorganisms involved in the winemaking are Saccharomyces cerevisiae and lactic acid bacteria which dominate the fermentation and malolactic conversion respectively. Let us now look into different steps involved in red wine production. The grapes are harvested after 1 to 3 weeks of color change and when the pH is about 3.25. Harvesting can be performed either manually or also mechanically. Destemming is the process of separating the grapes from the stems. Before the fermentation process, the stems are removed 
as the stem contain high level of tannin which also impart the vegetal aroma to the wine. Crushing is a process of breaking the skin of berries by squeezing it into get the extract of grape content. The crushed grapes and its skins are left to contact each other to extract the desired color. The squeezed juice along with the skin and seeds are called must. Preparation of must is the first step in wine making. The most commonly used cultured yeast in wine belong to Saccharomyces cerevisiae species. They are added to the must for the alcoholic fermentation to occur. The cultured yeast are usually added in either dried or inactive state. They are activated by mixing with warm water or diluted grape juice. For active yeast fermentation, they are continuously supplied with a source of carbon, nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus and also nutrient source such as vitamins and minerals. During the primary fermentation process, the yeast cells feed on the sugar in the must and involve in the conversion of sugar into alcohol and carbon dioxide. The temperature is maintained at 22 to 25 degrees Celsius. 1 gram of sugar will yield half a gram of alcohol in the product. Hence to obtain alcohol of 12% concentration, the must should contain around 24% of sugar. The duration of primary fermentation takes around 10 to 30 days depending on the final alcohol content in wine. Longer fermentation makes the wine dry because the majority of sugar is converted into alcohol whereas shorter fermentation produces a sweeter wine. Secondary malolactic fermentation takes place at the end of primary alcoholic fermentation. Malolactic fermentation is decarboxylation process which releases carbon dioxide. During this process, specific strains of lactic acid bacteria such as lactobacillus are added into the addition so that which is already available in the medium. This process turns malic acid into lactic acid which produces a more supple silky wine with a buttery taste. The whole process is kept under anaerobic condition to avoid oxidation of wine. The secondary fermentation is a slow process which take around 3 to 6 months. The next step is pressing, which is an optional process in which pressure is applied to the pomace to separate wine from the grapes and the skins. In production of red wines, pressing is performed after primary fermentation. The juice obtained through crushing called free run juice which accounts for about 60 to 70 percent of the total juice whereas 30 to 40 percent of juice comes from pressing called press juice. In practice, the free run juice and press juice are blended in the ratio of 85 to 90 percentage and 10 to 15 percentage respectively to get a complete balanced wine. The sediments are need to be removed after fermentation. The presence of solid portion could potentially harm the quality of wine in future. So to remove the solid, the wine is filtered through a filter or siphoned off from the top of vat after the solid sink to the bottom. Sometimes gelatin, micronized potassium caseinate, skim milk powder, bentonite are used as fining or clarifying agent. The addition of these agents remove microscopic particles that could create cloudiness of wine, removes tannins and also reduces the astringency of wine. After fermentation, sediment of tartarate crystals may appear in the wine formed due to the union of tartaric acid along with potassium. These crystals are known as wine crystals or wine diamonds. This process is called cold stabilization to reduce the tartarate crystals in wine. Hence, the temperature of wine is reduced to freezing cold for 1 to 2 weeks to separate the crystals from the wine. Aging or maturation is one of the major step in wine production. Immediately after fermentation, a period of maturation is required to get a pleasant taste of wine. During the maturation process, the acidity of wine falls and softens the tannins. This process takes place in a stainless steel vessel 
or oak barrels based on the desired taste of final product. Early drinking wines do not need maturation. For high quality wines, they must undergo maturation for above 9 to 22 months. During this time, the wine will undergo controlled oxygenation and produces the oak aroma. The traditional wine bottles are sealed with cork. The closure type such as synthetic corks, screw caps are currently used. Before bottling of wine, sulphate is added to prevent the unwanted fermentation and to preserve the wine. Another industrially important fermented product is the soy sauce. It is produced from fermented soybeans, roasted grains like wheat, barley or rice, salt and yeast molds. Soy sauce is considered as a traditional ingredient throughout Asia. The consistency vary from thick to very thick and color ranges from lighter to very dark brown. Let us discuss the steps involved in the modern method of soy sauce production. The basic ingredients for soy sauce making are soybean, wheat, salt and water. The carbohydrate in wheat imparts soy sauce a pleasant aroma. The starch in wheat is converted into glucose by the action of amylase from the mold which adds a sweetness to the sauce. The addition of brine solution prevents the entry of destructive microorganisms and also acts as a preservative. In the modern methods, the soybeans are soaked in water for 12 to 24 hours. The beans are dried and steam cooked at high temperature. Wheat is roasted and crushed to get a coarse product. The coarsely grounded wheat is mixed with the cooked soybeans in the ratio of 8 parts of soy with 2 parts of wheat. The steamed product is cooled and then mixture is inoculated with seed spores of Aspergillus oryzae or Aspergillus suji and kept for about 22 to 30 hours at 35 degrees Celsius. Sometimes the culture is grown on a steamed polished rice. The inoculated mash is spread on a layer in wooden trays and the trays are stacked to allow air circulation over the mash. During fermentation, the mold grows over the mash and releases heat. The temperature of mash may reach up to 40 degrees centigrade or higher. After 3 days, the white mold surface turns yellowish as pore formation begins. The mixture is now called koji. It is a concentrated source of amylolytic and proteolytic enzymes necessary for decomposition of carbohydrate and proteins. The molded mash is covered with 22% brine solution in a deep fermentation tank. Lactic acid bacteria and yeast cultures are added to the koji to form a slurry called maromi. Maromi mash which is a semi-solid state allowed to ferment at controlled temperature and occasional aeration for every 2 to 3 days in the beginning. The high salt concentration effectively inhibits the growth of undesirable organisms. The starch is broken down to sugars and fermented to produce lactic acid and alcohol. The pH drops from a near neutral to 4.7 to 4.8. The maromi mash is held in the fermentation tank for 6 to 8 months. The fermented mash is now pressed to remove the solid from the liquid soy sauce. During pressing, the maromi is strained through layers of fabric. After allowing the soy sauce to flow out under gravity, the mash is mechanically pressed for about 10 hours to obtain a raw soy sauce. The raw soy sauce obtained after pressing is left in a clarifier tank for 3 to 4 days. And the clarified sauce is then pasteurized to about 70 to 80 degrees Celsius. The heat treatment of salt halts the activity of enzymes. It eliminates the growth of active yeast and molds and also favors the development of characteristic color and aroma. After clarification, the sauce is bottled.
Let me summarize the lecture with few important points. Fermentation on an industrial scale is used for production of commercial products such as cheese, wine, vinegar, single cell protein, enzymes, etc. The industrial fermentation process are classified based on the type of substrate, feeding of substrate and also based on the need of aeration. Solid state fermentation is a type of fermentation that occurs on the surface of a substrate having little or near little moisture content. Submerged fermentation occurs in the presence of liquid nutrient media seeded with microbes. The industrial fermentation process are proceeded for the production of biomass or microbial cells, extracellular components, intracellular components and for the transformation of substrate into new products. Hope you have understood the concept. In our next lecture, we will be dealing with fermented foods present in India and all over the world. Thank you.